What is going on in the Java Sea? Illegal fishing, sloppy swirl, and a chattering, clattering prop. And there's something horrible in the water. Good morning. Despite appearances, lovely sunny morning, uh, there was quite a bit of cloud cover, had quite a bit of rain last night and uh, there's a few patches. So today we are going to go around the top, the sort of north coast of uh, Java around and start going down that, I suppose that northern coast towards Jakarta. It's very very busy, a lot of ships and there's a rather busy ferry port there at uh, the town or the port of Merak, which is where we've just been anchored for a couple of nights. Uh, managed to avoid a uh, close collision with one, but if the starboard port appears, it is your duty to keep clear. So we just uh, turned around and went behind him. Um, I think it confused him somewhat because he came on the radio asking where we were heading. So Liz weighed anchor at seven o'clock this morning and commented on the fact that the anchor pulled up the most amount of crap she has ever seen since Mumbai. And in the, I mentioned this yesterday, how filthy the water is here. It is appalling. Indonesia, if you are listening, you've really got to sort this out because it is disgusting. It is absolutely filthy. And it's in stark contrast with the islands that we've just been down. Um, the beaches, and again I've commented on this before, the beaches down the Mentawi Islands were beautifully clear and free of rubbish. The locals clearly uh, keep the beaches clean. What they do with that rubbish is anyone's guess. It probably gets burnt or incinerated, but uh, there is very little rubbish, apart from Sikakap, very little rubbish down that west coast. But then you come somewhere here, like this place. Um, as you know, we went to shore yesterday to that little beach cafe, the uh, beach itself littered with rubbish. Uh, and as I say, just plastic bags and crap in the water. It's really sad to see, you know, what can you do about it? Well there's some pretty obvious answers to that question and I think Indonesia needs to get on top of that. We're coming around the headland now and uh, it's pretty lumpy out here. We've got the tide with us at the moment which is good but we've also got about 20 knots of wind on the nose. Uh, I was hoping that perhaps it was just catabatics coming off the mountains, but now that we're clear of that and we're sort of out in the, uh, in the open water, it's still very lumpy. It'll be interesting to see what happens when the tide changes and to see whether we really slow down or not. So then we might have to take stock and think about uh, how far we go because uh, there's one island we could possibly anchor off which is only uh, five miles away or so. The next jump is about 30 miles away so we just have to see how it goes. As I said we just have to suck it and see and it's still difficult to tell exactly what to do. Still lots of industry behind us. Esper's kind of doing this a bit. But Liz, all credit to her, is down below making more fresh bread. Fresh bread, we're having fresh bread every day. It's marvellous. Unfortunately, the chart doesn't give much away. Uh, when you look at the chart, this is um, pretty much an open bay, shallow, obviously towards shore, uh, but there's no indication of any kind of industry at all. Uh, I think the chart that we've got, although it was updated six months ago, seems to be missing quite a bit. Um, Navionics on the phone is uh, giving us a bit more information, um, but of course we do have the satellite imagery as well, which I have checked out and I was aware that this was a continuation of the industry we saw down that uh, west coast. 
but if you look at the chart it just looks like it should be a clear run um, with plenty of places to drop into and drop the hook but I don't really want to be doing that surrounded by these tugs and cargo ships tugs especially tugs are in these kind of conditions and as they're coming close in to uh, the dock they are very difficult to work out exactly uh, what they're doing a lot of them don't appear on AIS we've been discussing this we're not sure why that is uh, occasionally you'll get the odd tug on AIS but a lot of times they're not and of course as they're maneuvering to get into the, uh, the harbour they are tied up alongside their, um, their load and I guess they use a bit of current to help manoeuvre their way in but uh, we can see them on radar obviously but it's uh, in these conditions it's quite tricky to work out exactly what they are doing still keeps you on your toes in it right we've just stopped off a little island called Pamuan and it's uh, five miles further than the big island we were planning to anchor off There's, there was quite a bit of swirl it was coming from the sort of east northeast and although this island runs east to west on the corner there's a little bit of protection from the swirl it's certainly uh, a lot more pleasant here than it is out there so this will at least give us a little rest and allow us to do a couple of things we've got to do on the boat uh, the big issue at the moment is that we seem to have a chattering prop it's making a horrible chattering sound when we're in gear and I need to go down and have a look at that look at the drive shaft and just check that out see what's going on the other thing we've got to do is to inflate our fenders we uh, gave away our old fenders and we've bought some new ones which we haven't got around to inflating yet so <laughs> we need to get those ready for our arrival in Jakarta tomorrow we are off at six in the morning witnessing a bit of illegal fishing here this fisherman dumped a net almost in front of us actually and uh, just pulled it in whole maneuver was done in 10 minutes and this is now illegal in Indonesia they have banned this kind of uh, seabed dragging net fishing it's being a bit naughty there there's our little island that we were tucked behind it was quite a good night's sleep in the end it was a bit bouncy to start with when we first arrived but uh, it all calmed down and um, hopefully the forecast is a little bit better today we've got 40 miles to get to Jakarta we have to get in on a rising tide or at least mid tide and above because uh, it's a shallow entrance so uh, we're leaving at 6 in the morning just to give us enough time to get there in time and to either anchor outside or at least attempt to go in so Liz is just dealing with a dirty anchor, it was a little bit muddy there. Millie is relaxing and um, I think it's going to be another motor, unfortunately. Very, very hazy, it's been really hazy these last few days. So as I mentioned we've got new fenders. Um, I'm supposed to be on watch but I thought I'd pop down and uh, see my able assistant hard at work here it's a good workout I can't do it because of my back Sitting down helps. anyway uh, these fenders came uninflated so we've got to pump them up and we should have six of them we can only find five anyway Liz is doing a very good job there We're on the second half of our leg to Batavia Marina in Jakarta and for the last few miles now this is what we've been seeing in the water I don't know how much this is coming out on the video but it's just filthy absolutely filthy plastic bags polystyrene wrappers bottles flip-flops it's just shit. 
as far as the eye can see. Can you see that? Look at this. It just goes on and on and on. It's disgusting and it's an embarrassment to be honest. Obviously for us it's a concern because uh, we could get Hessian sack or plastic bags wrapped around the prop and I really don't fancy going down in the water to free the prop up. Um, but more than that, this is not very pleasant for the locals. Uh, the last place we were anchored at by the port in Marrak, lots of kids swimming in the water. Would you want your kids to be swimming in this kind of water? Look at it, it just goes on. It's been an absolutely shit day of sailing. Uh, the wind, 15 to 20 knots on the nose. Uh, it was supposed to be dying down to less than five knots. Uh, swell hitting two to three meters. Uh, speeds dropping down to one and a half knots. Crappy water. And um, yeah, it's just been shit really. And we are approaching the marina at night time and it's not recommended that you do that, but we didn't have any choice on that matter. Unfortunately, there is nowhere to uh, lay the anchor and wait for a suitable tide as far as we can see. So I'm hoping we've slowed the speed right down so that when we do arrive, we should arrive with just enough water. Apparently entrance can be quite shallow, but it is just mud. So anyway, the sooner this is over, the better. I hate this shit. I've said it before, I just hate motoring through this kind of weather. Well, that was thoroughly depressing, Jamie. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about the cursing, but that really was a rubbish journey. That was one of the most difficult we've done, dropping down to one and a half knots, blah, blah, blah. But of course, what made it most disappointing was the amount of rubbish in the water. I have never seen anything that bad. Yeah, that was a very bad situation to be in, not nice at all. No doubt you will have your own ideas about who's to blame on that and we're expecting that you will be writing your opinions in the comments <laughs> for sure. Uh, but in the meantime, we have a very interesting story to tell you and it comes from the next generation of sailors. What have we all got in common? Turtles! We're here today on Sea Monkey with the Sea Monkey family and we're going to talk to you about these turtles that you will have seen us wearing quite a lot recently on our videos. First of all, let me introduce you to... My name is Sydney, I am the founder of the Sea Monkey Project. Uh, my name is Indy and I am the animator. <coughs> I'm Sarah and I'm a cartoonist. And I'm Carlos, the machine builder. So we're going to have a little chat about the project, tell you how you can win a turtle and I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking to the most important person, the CEO, Sydney, who's going to explain a little bit more to us. So Sydney, can you tell me why you call it the Sea Monkey Project? Oh, well, it's named the Sea Monkey Project because that is the name of our boat. And action! Hi, my name is Sydney. And my name is Indy. And we are the, the Sea, sea Monkeys! Monkeys. We have been living on a boat for eight years now and when we sailed away from Australia for Asia four years ago we saw something very distressing. 
We saw plastic in the ocean everywhere we went. We have seen it in every ocean, every beach, and every river. And that's just how much we see. Imagine the amount of plastic on the ocean floor. It is predicted that by the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than actual fish. Can you imagine that? We were intrigued, absolutely intrigued, when we saw these for the first time. Carlos posted a photograph up, so we had to find out a little bit more about them. Um, and I think it came about because you were doing it as a kind of part of your schooling. Is that right? Am I right there? Yes, well, this is, you know, because when we sailed, we saw how bad the plastic pollution problem was. But as we developed it, we now integrate it into our schooling. So it's now a big part of our school lifestyle. Yeah. Sort of thing. Through doing this project, we have traveled and met lots of amazing people. So I've learnt many new things from all these people and all sorts of different things from the places we go to. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit about the project then. From what I understand, you're taking plastic you're upscaling it, mm. upcycling it. Yes. I don't know the proper upscaling. terms. Mm. Upscaling, okay. Yeah, upscaling. So you're taking project. Mm. You're taking plastic, and usually it's single-use plastic. Yes, usually. Well, you can uh, if you have other things that you know they're not single-use, but as long as you can recycle it and yeah. you can shred it, then we will use it. Is it all from the ocean? Well, we do. We can pick up stuff from the beaches and just out of the water, but we're mostly trying to tap into the the source of the problem yeah. and trying to get it before it ends up into the sea as well. So we go and collect straws from our local you know, mamak shop where we get yeah. breakfast all the time and when we do that we also educate the locals about the plastic and then they see what we're making, these yes. turtles, they find that that's really cool so yes. they're just like oh okay we're gonna look out for this next time and they're collecting all, our, they're collecting all their straws for us and now they're collecting their plastic bags. Brilliant. So it's not just a question of dealing with a problem once it's already in the ocean. You're really trying to get the communities to understand that we don't want the plastic in the ocean. We need to stop it getting in there in the first place. So yes. that's a really big part of what you're doing. And of course, that goes on then to working with the community. Well, our main goal is to get the machines into small remote villages. And, you know, it's like a source of the problem that's kind of hard to tap into. So when we go there and we educate them, we can get them to use our machine to clean up their environment and you know, raise awareness for other people. Like it's not just their problem, it's yeah. the people in like, Europe us. or America. Yeah. yeah. So we have these communities, these remote communities uh, with whom you're working and they are setting up their machines. We'll talk about those in a moment and they're producing these wonderful things. Um, so it's about getting them to do that and to do that they have to see some return I guess so how do we how does how does that work because no one's going to do this for free are they no well that's like a big thing that that's a part of it is like you know we don't want like volunteers from a local project like a turtle project we don't yeah. want them doing it we want the locals yeah. to go in there and they can, you know, like on Pahentian Island, right. we have the local cleaners making yes. the turtles. Oh, of course, they're cleaning up a lot of plastic. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So they can collect their plastic and yeah. bring it into the recycling facility and they can, you know, get an extra income and, you know, they, they, we, we have some photos of them making their turtles and they look really proud. And yeah. It's really fun to watch. Okay, so these yes. turtles are being made by locals, they're getting employment, they're making money, they're cleaning up the oceans, they're helping people to understand not to put the, uh, the rubbish in the oceans in the first place, so it's all good. Yes. So the machines then, so in order to get a bit of old plastic that you found by the road and turn it into one of these, yes. give me a very quick lowdown on how it works. Well, we just collect plastic from like what we're doing right now, uh, at our workshop in Kuala Lumpur, we collect the plastic from the the food shop downstairs, and then we have to do like a quick process of just rinsing the straws, for example. And then you got to shred it, which is what my brother does. He runs the shredding machine. Okay. There's three machines on each table. Yeah. So there's the shredder, the extrusion, and the injection. But the after we shred it, we then put it into the injection machine, and it melts inside a little tube, and then we inject it into a mold. Yeah. And then you take the turtles out of the mold and they're all together in four pieces yes. and my job 
we have to cut the plastic, the excess plastic off the turtles yeah. and then we recycle that excess plastic again. Okay, and I know that they come in lots of different colours, so I mm. guess at some stage, is that at the shredding stage that you then put them into colours or something? Yeah, oh. well, as we're, when we collect the plastic yeah. and then sort it into colours okay, and then, yeah, then, like, pe lots of people think that we've painted the turtles or dyed them, but no, it's just their natural, mm. well, not natural, the, the plastic colour before we recycled it. So the Sea Monkey Project is all about promoting um, recycling of plastic and preferably not using it in the first place, let's admit, yes. <laughs> and uh, keeping the oceans clean. And that's great and we can all help by buying a turtle. But you're taking it now to the next level, I understand. Yes, well, we have gotten bigger the past couple months. We are now working with the Body Shop Malaysia. Brilliant. Um, Adidas, we did an order for them and we are communicating right now with Australia Zoo and Sea Life Aquarium. Okay, so that's not for turtles, is, is it? Because you can do things other than turtles. Yes, well for Adidas, um, we are making, we made coasters. Yeah. For the body shop, we are now going to be making key rings. Okay. And Australia Zoo and Sea Life, Sea Life may want turtles, right. but Australia Zoo may want other things like a bag or maybe yes. turtles or so you make the mold working with whoever your customer is so you decide what they want and then mm. then you have to make a mold and then once you've got the mold ready you you then farm it out to the various um, little workshops you've got around the area is that how it works yeah well, if we get a order yeah. from say Adidas they want 500 coasters or something yeah they will will spread the order out through our different communities so the communities are all getting the benefit of, they're all making some money, they're all being employed, yes. and we're getting more plastic out of the oceans and off the street. Wait, didn't we send you some turtles to give away? Oh God, you did, you did, but I forgot to bring them. I'm really sorry, I forgot to bring them here right now. So we'll go straight back to the boat and we'll show everybody the turtles that you gave us to give away to our viewers. Coming up, how to win one of these turtles, but we only have two to give away. So for the rest of you, if you would like to support the project and buy your own turtle for yourself or your family and friends, then check out the link in the description below. You might be a retailer or a business, you might want to commission a little batch of turtles, especially for you, or maybe not turtles, maybe little bowls, or any of the things that Sydney uh, mentioned in the video. You might even want to get some earrings. Uh, I have some earrings from the wonderfully talented sea monkeys. And just to let you know, they come, look, with these beautiful tags, beautiful hanging tags, all designed by the sea monkeys. They're very charming, aren't they? They really are. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so on to how you could win one of these. We thought we would <laughs> throw up a little competition for you and we were thinking hard about what uh, scenario to set yeah. you and it is this. If you were in possession of the last remaining single-use straw in the world, what would you do with it? Mm, yes. So. Put, put your answer in the comments below and don't forget to put the hashtag sea monkeys along with your answer yeah we'll be choosing the one the two that we think are the funniest the best the whatever it is they just have to touch us in some way mm. they are a talented lot aren't they those sea monkeys they really are mm. talented inspirational and positive as well now you may be familiar with some of sarah's work she's a professional cartoonist who goes under the name of the cruising cartoonist and her comic strip is known as the coconut telegraph you can find links to her website and her facebook page below also indy mm -hmm. 11 year old indy <laughs> has his own little animation channel on youtube so go and check out give him some support subscribe and like some of his wonderfully amusing and talented animations and he goes under the name of indy steenland productions again we'll put the link below so you can check out everything at your leisure in the meantime thank you so much for watching this episode peace and fair winds by buying a handmade turtle made by local people you are funding the cottage industries and contributing to the process. And if you get tired of your little Thomas the Tank Turtle, then you can either pass it on to a friend or you can ship it back to us and we will give it a new home. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching and we hope you will support our cause for a cleaner future. 
Thank you. Thank you.